My name is James Larkin. I treat melanoma and kidney cancer at the Royal Marsden Hospital in London in the UK. Today we'll be focusing on the emerging area of MEC targeting and I hope I'll be able to show you in the coming minutes why I think this is very relevant for the treatment of patients with melanoma. The first image I'd like to show you is a picture of the cell and what you can see on the surface of the cell are receptors, in this case tyrosine kinase receptors and their job is to transmit messages from the external environment to the interior of the cell. Now how this works is that ligands outside the cell may bind to the receptors and the binding of the ligand to the receptor might cause a change in the receptor, a bit like a switch being flicked into the on position and then that would cause inside the cell further changes in signalling molecules which might result in growth of the cell or division of the cell or any of a number of normal physiological processes which in cancer go wrong. There are two key pathways that can be considered. So if you take, for example, a mutation in RAS, which can occur in lots of different types of cancer, in melanoma, NRAS mutations can occur, and an NRAS mutation can result in signaling downstream via potentially the PI3 kinase pathway or the MAP kinase pathway. So both of these pathways are important to think about for therapeutic targeting, and MEC is a component of the MAP kinase pathway. A number of different MEC inhibitors have been evaluated in clinical trials in patients with cancer. What these trials have shown us to date is there seem to be a number of side effects that are associated with MEC inhibitors as a class of drugs. But despite all of that, these drugs seem to be actually pretty well tolerated by patients. Trametinib is the MEK inhibitor that has been evaluated most extensively in clinical trials to date. Uh, in fact, there's been a phase three trial of trametinib in comparison with chemotherapy in V600 mutant melanoma. What that trial showed was a significant prolongation of progression-free survival in comparison with chemotherapy. And importantly, that benefit was shown in a number of different patient subgroups, including patients with a raised LDH, uh, patients with performance status of 1 on the ECOG scale, um, and also patients who'd received prior treatment for melanoma. So those are all very important findings when we try to extrapolate the clinical trial into our routine, everyday practice. There's been considerable interest in combining MEK inhibitors with BRAF inhibitors to treat BRAF mutant advanced melanoma and there are a number of points to highlight which are relevant to this. The first is that it's possible to combine both drugs at full dose which is something that's very unusual in general for targeted drugs. The second is that the two drugs together appear based on early evidence from clinical trials to prolong the period of disease control from roughly six months to nine months and the third is that the combination of the two drugs together seems to have less side effects than BRAF inhibitors on their own. The most obvious example of which is skin toxicity so there appears to be less hyperkeratosis and less cutaneous squamous cell carcinomas on the combination of BRAF and MEK inhibitors than with BRAF inhibitors alone. In 2013, we've seen further preliminary evidence for the potential role of MEK inhibitors in molecularly defined subsets of patients with melanoma. So for example, in uveal melanoma, a rare subtype of melanoma, we've seen evidence for activity from selumetinib. And the second example, and that's illustrated here in this waterfall plot, is melanomas that are driven by NRAS mutations, which is probably about 20% overall of melanoma. And we can see that for the drug MEK162, there is preliminary but definite evidence of tumour shrinkage in a small number of patients. And this is very exciting because there have been attempts to target RAS therapeutically for a number of years, none of which have been successful. So what we're seeing here is the potential for MEK inhibitors to be active in this very difficult situation. 
To summarise, what we've seen in the last few years is evidence for the efficacy of MEK inhibitors in a number of different molecularly defined subsets of patients with melanoma. What we've also seen is that these drugs can be given with a manageable side effect profile. What I think we'll see in the next few years is further clinical trials in different tumour types and also investigating combinations of MEK inhibitors with other drugs and I think we'll see expanding indications in the future for the use of these drugs to treat cancer which is very exciting.